Hi guys. We are Beyond Fertility, a holistic approach. I'm Dr. Robin Calabrese and I'm here with Kareen Baker and we are talking block tubes part one. So we are very excited to kind of go down this road. Um, we have a couple of segments that we're going to kind of break everything down. The first segment is, is how do you test for it? You know, how do you know if you have blocked tubes? You know, what are your, what are symptoms? And there are three key tests that we can use to see if you have blocked tubes. Um, the first test is an x-ray test, which is called the HSG. And Kareem can go in a little bit more about what actually goes in with it. So the HSG um, is a test that I even did. So I, I experienced it myself. But the HSG is where they pretty much insert a catheter and it has um, dye, which they shoot into your um, uterus, into your cervix, and it goes into your fallopian tubes. And the purpose is to see, is the dye going to spill out of the fallopian tubes? And that lets you know whether or not the tubes are open or if they're blocked. If nothing comes out, then you know that the tubes are blocked. Um, if they spill out on one tube or both, then you know, okay, there's an opening there. Um, but it at least gives you an indicator as to whether your tubes are blocked or not. And it is a procedure that you will do at in the office at the uh, fertility clinic or if your OBGYN does it, if they treat fertility. Um, it's an outpatient procedure. It doesn't take long. Um, so you're awake. Are you awake or do they put you to sleep for it? No, you're you're awake for it. Um, they give you some medication to ease any discomfort, um, but you're awake for it, and um, it's pretty quick. It, it doesn't take that long, um, and and once you're done, then you go home. Um, but at least it gives a good indicator, also, if there's any type of blockages, also in the uterus as they're shooting the dye, they can see that. But the main goal is to actually focus on the actual tubes. Will the dye actually spill out? which is an important indicator, are they blocked or not blocked? Did you have pain after the procedure? Um, you can have some cramping, because mm -hmm. um, I had uh, some cramping afterwards, um, but it, they're mild, kind of like menstrual cramping mm -hmm. type thing is what I encounter. You take like two Tylenols and, and, and you know, you kind of just rest the day and you're good. Um, some people don't, experience much discomfort with it. You know, you might have some bleeding a little bit, but not a lot. Um, but it's it's not um, anything like major. It, it is a very mild outpatient procedure um, and you can tolerate it pretty well. Oh, good. So that's very good. See, this is why this is kind of a cool discussion because some people in this discussion, we have experienced a lot of what you guys may experience. So Definitely always, if you have questions about this stuff, you can send it, you can send us an email and ask us different questions. Um, the two other tests that we want to talk about is an ultrasound test and also the keyhole test. Again, these are surgical procedures that you will receive at either your fertility clinic, OBGYN, or primary, either primary care that has a surgery center or something along those lines. But those are the ways to find out if there is a blockage and where the blockage is. Now, some of the symptoms that you may experience prior to even asking if you have um, block tubes is really just having pain in the pelvis area or belly. Now, this is not pain that you would experience during a menstrual cycle, but it will be more intense during your period or the pain will be constant. And so these are things that you kind of want to look for. They'd be like, am I having more pain throughout the entire cycle? That is an inflammation that is happening in my lower pelvic region, or is it cramps that are exemplified or lasting longer than they should? And um, we're gonna go to the next one, which is causes. This is, uh, oh, referrals, I forgot. <laughs> this is, live is fun, referrals. <laughs> we're, we're learning as we go. So, you yeah. know, this is it's all new for us. Um, <laughs> just just wanna get the information out here to you because it's so important. And, you know, a lot of you call or you'll email me and you say, you know, like, I, I have blocked tubes and I just want, you know, want to conceive. Um, uh, and we or some of you may not know for sure and you want to find out because you're not conceiving. So you can always contact us and we will give you a referral to a fertility clinic in the Central Florida area who mm -hmm. we are confident about their work. 
And um, so we definitely refer only to those who we know we're confident with. Either we have experienced them ourselves and been there, or they are practitioners who we know that we can trust to send you there. Um, so you can always contact our office for those referrals and, you know, Dr. Calabrese's office at Whole Family Healthcare. They do also a lot of testing mm -hmm. uh, for you. So if there's additional testing that you would like blood work and stuff done to find out additional causes of, or of the blockages, they are great at doing the lab testing also. And that's right. This is the, I, I like I like this stuff. So blood work is always going to tell you what the most important things are going on in your system. So let's get into causes. I know causes can always be, you know, it, it can be happy, sad, you know, and different things. But if you have a history of pelvic inflammation. Now, how you got that inflammation, there can be a number of different ways that can happen. Yeah. Um, if you had a previous appendix burst mm -hmm. because had an appendix burst in your past, there could be scar tissue, there could be toxicity that is causing one of the tubes to be blocked. Mm -hmm. um, sexually transmitted disease is one. Um, gonorrhea and chlamydia are two big factors. And one thing that Karina and I really want to say is this is honestly a judgment free zone. Yeah. We just want to make sure that you guys that you get the help that you have to make sure that you can clean it out so it doesn't cause issues like cancer and different things in the future. Right. And endometriosis is a huge factor as well. And if you don't, we'll talk more about endometriosis in another video, but just short endometriosis is an overgrowth within the uterus of things growing outside of the uterus as well. Right. If you had a history of abdominal surgery, now some of my patients who are now in childbearing years were born with their intestines outside of their body. And so because of that, they've had to have surgery at a young age, which then grew up as having inflammation throughout their lives and now has more has more issues. Right, right. And, and you see that, you know, well, I always encourage women to just make sure you're following up with a gynecologist and getting your annual well women's exam. That is so important because oftentimes things will go undiagnosed and they may be over overlooked because they didn't have symptoms of certain um, sexually transmitted diseases or whatever. And so you, you overlook it in your, in your younger years. And then as you get older and now you're in childbearing age and you decide, okay, I want to start a family, you may run into challenges of conceiving. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to make sure you're following up, getting your annual um, well women's exam, your pap smear, get that done every year um, and find out, you know, the health of your body so that mm -hmm. you can ensure that you know, you can have uh, children later on. Uh, and, and, you know, like, like Dr. Calabrese said, we're a non-judgmental um, business here. We don't judge you. So when you come to us and let's say you do have a sexually transmitted disease that has caused you to have blocked tubes or, or whatever your situation is, we're not here to judge you. We're here to help you in any way that we can. So just know that you know, whatever your cause is, um, you know, if we can help you to treat that naturally, mm -hmm. we will do that naturally. If it needs to be done surgically, we will refer you to those who are trained to do surgery because not all tubes in all honesty can be treated naturally depending on the blockage and what it is. There mm -hmm. needs to be surgery and that's just the reality of it. And we want to give you all the options if we can do it, we can do it. If we can't, we'll let you know we can't. And we will definitely refer you on so that you can treat the issues, you know, and, and move forward and, and have a, a family. Because that is our main goal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, and sometimes I know the word surgery can be uncomfortable and scary to people. But if that is the one thing that is stopping you from having a child naturally is just basically, you know, to more or less clean the pipes, if you will. I mean, these are all options and through holistic approaches, we can help you pre and post surgery as well yeah. to make sure that there's less inflammation um, that can happen. So I said, there's, even though if you had your heart set on doing everything naturally, there are ways to do it naturally with involving Western medicine as well. And then ending up having everything naturally. And this is, this, these are all discussed within consultations, you know, between you and your partner you and your spouse, whatever, on what would best options work for you and your family. Right. The next thing is, you know, is um, can you get pregnant 
with blocked fallopian tubes? And I'm going to let Kareen take this one. Yes, um, this is something that we get asked all the time. Can you get pregnant with blocked fallopian tubes? And the answer really is yes or yes and no, mm -hmm. because um, <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it just depends. If let's say there's only one tube that's blocked and the other tube is healthy, then there is a 50-50 chance that you know you you can. It, it's a great possibility. If both tubes are blocked. Can you get pregnant naturally? Then there is probably going to be a challenge where you can't. Um, however, it doesn't mean that you cannot get pregnant if you have good quality um, eggs and, and if you want to do the IVF process. That's an option there where they can go in and actually retrieve the eggs mm -hmm. and out of the ovaries. And, um, and that way you can actually go through um, IUI, IVF, and conceive that way. So there are some options. It just depends really on which will work best for you. And that's something that you really have to think about and, and decide what's the best option for me. Do I want to try to do it the natural way? If that's the best approach for me, will, you know, will that help? Or do you want to move to a, another, another approach that's more conventional or traditional? Um, IVF, IUI, you know? But is it possible? It yeah. will help you. And that's the cool part about Beyond Fertility, a holistic approach. Even though we do promote holistic options, we are here to help support you in any decision because, you know, a pitcher just doesn't go on the mound and have no one else out there. You know what I mean? You just don't go into that surgery or go into, go into childbirth without having mm -hmm. some sort of team, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be anything. We never want you to feel alone through this process. And sometimes it's very important to have advocates who are either currently been through the process or working with people who are going through the process, you know, and just have being able to create, like I said, this, that team approach for you. Yeah. And support is so important with this whole process. Because yeah. Even if you have blocked tubes, you know, you may be feeling so discouraged and overwhelmed, like whatever happened, will I ever have a family, you know, you may feel like the, the clock is ticking. What do I do? And so, you know, that can place a lot of pressure on you and, and not knowing like, where do I go from here? What are your, what are my options? You know, what do I do? And so, you know, that's our goal is to really just to educate you, give you the options and let you know that you do have options. You know, don't ever feel like you don't have an option. There are options available to you. You just have to decide what is best for you in your situation, what approach do you want to take? And like, like Dr. Calabrese said, we're all here for the, the holistic approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we respect also Western medicine. There's a place for that. And we're not here to ever say that Western medicine is not important. They are important. Um, yeah. There's a place for them. There's a place for us. And we can actually work together and together, you know, it's so much stronger together. We can work together. <laughs> it really, um, you know, we can really help the body to, to you know, do its job at its finest and then they can do their job and they can really work together and helping you with um, the blocked fallopian tubes and to getting you to the place where you want to be, which is a, a healthy pregnancy. So. And now we're going into my favorite part. Treatments. Treatment options and benefits. Benefits. And I said, this is... This is like where I really think, you know, that, that Karina and I really shine, you know, and just all the treatment options that we have for you or we have at our disposal to get you to that place where you want to be. And the cool part is, is that you just don't have to be local because we can like going back to the referrals that we had before, we can start referring, you know, nationwide and different things like that. So I said, it's just, even if you're watching this video, like, oh, I wish I was local. We have people that we can refer you to as well. So that should never stop you from sending an email, reaching out on social mm -hmm. media, anything like that. Um, so said we, we've sent stuff to people who are not even here. Like we've shipped Earth mm -hmm. and we've done stuff. So, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to be here to, to work with us. The, this is so true. Yeah. And I'm going down the road. So what are some of the fun treatment options? So number one, my favorite, traditional Chinese medicine. Now, what does that mean? It's acupuncture, Chinese herbs, moxa, cupping, you know, and a multitude of different things that kind of go into that. And there is 
diff different ways. Now you guys could be searching on the internet at night, you know, what, what is good? And there could be singular Chinese herbs that come up and actually Karina and I were just having this conversation. It's not necessarily that you would just take one Chinese herb. It's you have to figure out what's best for you. You know, you, you guys, every person has an individual plan. Every person, because if it was cookie cutter, it would have been one and done and everybody would have children and no one would have to go 14 rounds of IVF and everything. Exactly. Like that. I mean, doctors even struggle with getting the formulas right for IVF, even with the exactly. medicine. So, yes. you know, even with traditional Chinese medicine, it's a formula and it's not one stop, you know, it's not cookie cutter. It doesn't fit everyone. It's not one size fits all. It's the same with IVF. When you go to IVF, they give you a treatment plan protocol and they tweak it along the way. Mm -hmm. And it is you're not going to have the same amount of um, gandotrophins as the other person, you know, it, it is different because I've had every single one of these treatment options that we're going to discuss. And I could tell you right now. <laughs> so I know what that's like, um, but it's not going to be one stop, you know, one size fits all. So please be careful when you're on the Internet and you see these things pop up and they say, oh, this treats block fallopian tubes. Be careful because everything in there may not be for your specific situation because there's various causes as to why your tubes are blocked. And so you can be treating it with something and it will have no effect on you. And then you'll say, well, it doesn't work. Well, it wasn't for you. So you have to find the actual thing that works. And Robin said it best when you, you have to get it customized to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely customized. And just kind of like a little, you know, customize and understanding blood work. I mean, these are things if people, if you want hard evidence, you know, it truly like is in your blood and nutrients and it'll tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. And there are ways that, that your body will tell you what it needs. Um, the next thing is also really awesome is uh, fertility abdominal massage. This may seem kind of like frou-frou to some people, but it has been tried and tested in many different cultures in many different countries over and over again about the benefits of this, not only just for block fallopian tubes, but for many types of abdominal situations that are going on, even after childbirth and C-section, mm -hmm. we'll get into that later, but just keeping that area warm and lubricated. And if it if there is a block tube and as the massage is happening, it could naturally just release because the rest of the body is compressing against itself. I mean, if there's so much science-based information out there about how that will help and how opening up the organ systems, opening up the fascia, yeah. opening up even just and separating that skin from that skin, muscle, tissue, bone, just to be able to allow just for circulation to happen. Because within a traditional Chinese medicine model, when there is a blockage, which is called qi stagnation or qi blockage, there's no blood going there. Yeah. And blood is life, life is blood. And the more that you start to bring blood into the system, into the areas, your body will take care of things naturally. Right. Now, going back, you know, this is where like Western medicine comes in. If we've done all this stuff like that, and we're still having issues. This is why Western medicine becomes our friend. Mm -hmm. But through a holistic approach, we built you up, you know, your immunity, your mental, your emotional, everything that goes along with that in order to receive some, some procedures. Mm -hmm. Or it could happen that you just get pregnant because things have started to move around naturally. Mm -hmm. Is there, do you have anything yeah. you want to add? And castor oil packs with the, oh. with the fertility abdominal massages, castor oil packs are, I don't even know how to rate. They are great. They are definitely helpful is if you do them correctly. And yes. you have to know when to do them. You cannot do castor oil packs all month long. You know, there's a, a window that you can actually do it in, especially when you're trying to conceive, because you can actually, if you do it wrong, you can actually miscarry. You don't want that problem. So you have to know when to do it, the window to do it in. And that castor oil is so beneficial because it really helps to get things moving. It flushes out and helps to break down scar tissue and, and things. So we do that. Mm -hmm. um, that is so beneficial to uh, women who have blockages. There and think like castor oil, that's so old, but the mm -hmm. old, they're old because they've been used over and over and over again. It's like the great, great grandmother's recipe yeah. that's still the same. It's like, it, it's not saying that it's an end all end all, you know, even like Karine said, like even with IVF, they're still trying to work out the recipe. Well, we're just trying to work out the recipe with you. Um, supplements, supplements are fun. 
And I said, there's a couple of supplements that, you know, we recommend. And again, this is not things that you just take individually. There's usually a rhyme or reason because with your cycles and with your cycle in the four phases, there are times within the cycle that these are important to take. But some of the supplements that we've recommended are simple. You know, vitamin C is always wonderful. Yeah. Turmeric or curcumin, yeah. um, ginger, garlic, and vaginal steaming. I know it's like, what? Vaginal steaming? Mm -hmm. but it truly does work. And there's a couple of different options that you can see that you can do your research on. Kareem, do you, have you experienced veg, vaginal steaming before? I have not done it, but you know what? I will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have done it before. And I said, and I did it before I have, uh, my gynecological history has been fun, you know, but what, what, who are we if our gynecological history hasn't been fun in the past? But I have done it before and I have to tell you at first, I mean, anything like that feels weird. You know, they call them vaginal facials, they call them vaginal, I mean, there's many different things. But um, it is probably one of the most relaxing things that you could do because of how much it eases pain. And going back to symptoms of block tubes, when you talk about pressure, pelvic floor pain, or excuse me, lower pelvic pain, um, belly pain, you're going to start to notice that putting heat up in there with these vaginal, with these um, vaginal steamers is going to help relax all of that. And then your body may take care of the inflammation on its own. So I said, these are things that you can just try on your own. Um, dietary change. Yeah, that's I mean, huge. I can't go anywhere with that. That's just, yes. It's yeah. huge. You <laughs> especially when you're doing herbal yeah. if you're not willing to change your diet to accommodate the herbs your the herbs are almost going to be like fighting against what you're doing and herbs work best in a in a like an alkaline natural state environment but you have to work along with the herbs um so you have to make sure that you're you're drinking a lot of water like hydration is so important so important it, it helps to improve blood circulation and you know, keep the cells hydrated. It helps to reduce disease also, you know, if you're hydrated. Um, but it you also so stay hydrated, you know, yeah. so <laughs> that's huge. skin, hair, nails. It's like, gosh, you need hydration. And that's a huge for even trying to conceive. And, and you got to have hydration for blood circulation to the uterus. But um, definitely dietary, you know, reducing your sugars and, and alcohol, smoking, um, you know, making sure you're eating a, a healthy, balanced diet of vegetables and getting enough of your proteins. And you have to really balance your diet. But on top of that, making sure that you have the right type of foods for you is important because everyone cannot consume the same diet and be okay. This is eat right for your blood type. This is right. why the blood is so good in understanding, you know, what your blood work is telling you. Micronutrient testing, um, food sensitivity testing. Um, these things kind of help guide you because, you know, with dietary changes, you could have, because there's three types of for dietary stuff. There's IgG, IgA, and IgE. Mm -hmm. I, and we'll get into that much farther, but it just so you know, IgE, you probably know because you'll that's anaphylactic. You'll you you would have known at this point in your life if you're in your 20s that you have you are anaphylactic to something. Now the IgG and the IgA, those can just be more inflammation things that are built in over time. Mm -hmm. And understanding blood work and understanding your blood and understanding that stuff is can really help make dietary changes that work for you. Yeah. And I think in a few in a future um, one of these uh, we're gonna have the actual nutritionist on, and she's a functional integrative nutritionist, and so she'll be able to go into that a lot more in depth. Yes, like if you ever experience eating something and then afterwards you're sluggish and you just don't really understand why. It's like why do I want to go to sleep now? It's like I just had lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's certain things that we eat that really does that to you. So if it does that to you where it makes you feel so exhausted and you just want to go to sleep, imagine what it's doing to your reproductive organs. So, and slow everything down. Yeah. So you have to really um, get with someone who understands nutrition, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to reproductive, because not all nutritionists are created equal, you know, because yeah. certain foods that you eat can cause more inflammation and damage to you. And that's what they would recommend. And then, that is really what's your problem, why you can't conceive. 
and what's causing the blockage and maybe even making it worse. So, I mean, I, I, every time we do these, I learn so much and for more information and I hope that we've been able to teach you some stuff. Um, we are obviously you notice this is part one. We do have part two that we will do the next week. And you know, what should you do next? That's always the question. So let's say you've done things. So what are my options? But you'll have to come back next week and find out. Yeah. And so, we'll definitely share that with you next week, what to do next, because um, it's so important to make sure that, you know, now that you have this information, where do you go from here? You don't want to just leave you hanging. So we will definitely share with you where to go from here. Now that you know this, what to do next. So I would just say, you know, make sure that you follow us on uh, Facebook. Um, we have a Facebook page, Beyond Fertility Holistic Approach. You can get in contact with us there. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want to email us privately, you can do that, beyondfertility2 at gmail.com, and we'll check our emails and respond back to you. Um, so you have two ways of getting in contact with us. And if you have questions or anything, please, you know, email us, message us, and we'll definitely reach out to you and, and help. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing you next week. Bye guys. Bye-bye.